So I kind of like developed being funny as like a way to get people to like me because ultimately I was like, you know, lonely and I hated myself and I wanted people yeah. to like me. And I was like, well, people like it when I'm funny. So I guess I'll just be funny. Um, and now that I'm like a fully formed adult who's like worked through a lot of in therapy, yeah. I now understand that, you know, I'm like inherently, you know, worthy of love just for being Absolutely. alive and all of that. You don't need to be funny anymore. Yeah, exactly. It's just, um, I just am now. Yeah. Melissa. Hello. Hello, Eric. I'm here with Melissa Ong. We're going to play, it's essentially 36 questions to fall in love. Okay, well, I'm already in love with you, so. Well, I feel this exact same reciprocity toward you. Okay. So how about 36 questions to fall deeper? Even deeper in love? I don't know if that's possible, but let's well, go. I'm very flattered. I'm all about maximizing. Um, let's. I'm all about intensity and feeling the most. I mean, I already feel every single emotion at a thousand percent at any given point in time and yeah i'm i'm down i'm down for it to be like a total love fest i think you're essentially like the spirit animal behind this whole concept and study okay so they put random strangers through it mm -hmm. and many of the pairs after going through these questions became really good friends one pair even got married to each other oh my gosh okay so yeah. we're gonna get married after this maybe okay great i think so it really just jives through your life philosophy right uh-huh just go for it yeah okay let's fucking go send it <laughs> so the way it starts we're gonna make eye contact, okay, intimate, mm -hmm. and the first person to blink has to ask the first question. Okay. Are you ready for this? Okay, yeah. Give me like one, two, three. Are you like moistening your eyes? Yeah, I'm moistening my eyes. Beautiful. Three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> I lost. You know, you I, I have stoner eyes. My eyes are always dry because I'm always smoking a joint at any given point in time. So uh, I lost. I'm okay with losing. And okay. I lost. Well, you're going to ask question. the first question. Do I All just right. pick anyone? Level one. Level one. So I just pick randomly? Yeah, just pick randomly. Okay. I love this. As a child, what do you think I wanted to be? I think two thoughts. I think as a child, you wanted to feel loved and appreciated on mm -hmm. an emotional level. Mm -hmm. And I think in terms of what you needed to do in order to feel that, I want to say you were always more interested in something more creative. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, so I like... I just wanted to be an artist, basically. I wanted to be... Uh, so like when I was a little kid, I was like... You know how in elementary school, there's always like that one kid that's like really good at drawing. Yeah. I was that kid. So in elementary school, I was like the quiet, like little Asian kid who was always just like, you know, alone and like drawing. And I would spend like, you know, days just like alone, focused on like a single like art piece. And, um, and everyone knew me as like the quiet kid that was good at you drawing. You were quiet. Yeah. At what point in your life did you stop being quiet? Probably in middle school. Cause I, um... So, so like in elementary school, I had kind of like, I had kind of like a weird elementary school experience because I was misplaced in special ed. And so that kind of me up mentally because, um, you know, at the time, like people weren't very accepting of that. So I was kind of labeled as like, oh, like she's special and that's bad. Um, so I think like, uh, I, I had like associate and, and like, and I associated like me, like having outbursts with me, with that being bad, which kind of like made me quiet as a kid, because like, as a kid, I was sort of like naturally loud. So like how I, so like, so what happened was uh, I remember in kindergarten, um, I was really obsessed with like nakedness and nudity and like, no one told me why it was bad. Right. So I would like, um, get all of the kids in my class to like go out to the playground. And I'd be like, let's all get naked. And I like actually got it to happen once where I was like, let's all get naked. Um, and obviously my teachers were like, what the f and then they didn't know how to deal with me. So they yeah. were like, she's in special ed now. And, um, but I was just obsessed with nudity as a kid. And so, and I was always, so I was drawing like naked pictures of like myself and my classmates and my teachers. So I remember being in kindergarten and I was like drawing naked pictures of everyone and like giving them to my teachers. And my teachers were like, you can't do that. And I was like, why, why can't we all just be naked? Uh, and, but that was like, you know, me having like a creative outburst, but then I got, you know, punished for it. 
and you know placed in special ed and that kind of made me like ostracized in elementary school because people started labeling me as like oh she's special there's like something wrong with her like da 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 so I think it kind of I think in retrospect that kind of made me more quiet and um and and then I was like well drawing is like my you know sort of like lonely yeah. outlet um and but but you're absolutely right like I uh I, I wanted to be a fashion designer actually like I would always like design my own clothes and I was always just like drawing stuff like I, I wanted to be a lot of things obviously I wanted to be uh like an anime superhero of like course. yeah like who doesn't want to be okay, an anime like superhero Sailor Moon or like Goku style like Goku oh, like, okay like, <laughs> okay, no, okay. No, like, like big and buff oh yeah no yeah. no like um I watched Dragon Ball Z and I was like that's what I want to be I was always like waiting for my powers to kick in you know like I, I remember being that and she's going to be like yeah like one day like I'm gonna get my my super saiyan powers are gonna kick in and I'm gonna be able to fly and, do and you'll all, this all crazy see stuff yeah exactly and I was like <laughs> and you'll all see that I wasn't supposed to be in special ed and that my ideologies about nudity were correct Correct. And in a way, I'm kind of doing that now, like in 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 a, in a different way. But um, you're you're, you're yeah. Now right you get money. everyone I'm, who saw you trying to express yourself creatively, like as a kid, not knowing what's the style convention, what's taboo, just trying to be you, just be like, hey, why can't we just be free? Getting slapped down. Yeah. Now you're basically super saiyan. Yeah. And now I'm basically super saiyan. But like, but you know, I, but I had to work through that, right? Because like as a kid, yeah. um, I was. You know, I was very creative and I was very artistic, but like when I expressed that, I just got punished. You for were it. literally thrown into a special ed class because of that. Yeah, exactly. And then so I, so at a very early age, I associated my inherent like artisticness and creativity with like, oh, this is bad and I'm being socially rejected and it's wrong. And so that's why I, you know, suppressed my creativity because I just associated it with being bad. And then I was like, why like as a kid you just want to fit in and you just want to be normal right um and then so um then I remember like from fifth to sixth grade I had like switched schools I, I had like changed schools a lot yeah. um growing up because I, I I kept getting labeled in my school district as like special ed and my you know strict Asian parents were like we can't have our kid be special ed she needs to be like the golden child who goes to it was perfect in all ways and is highly successful yeah. blah and then so um so they literally yank you out of school and put you in another just to avoid that label literally yeah so they That's were traumatic. like we can't get her out of because like uh so I, I remember in elementary school like the first like kindergarten through like third grade I was at this one school and they were like she's special ed ah and then they put me in this other school and then they were like she's special ed ah and then they put me in another school um in middle school and, and at that point like I like I was just kind of socially behind my whole life because yeah. I didn't like have proper socialization because I was just like misplaced. Literally, you're being ed. thrown into new environments every single year. People shouting, be like, hey, she's special ed. Your parents just yanking you out. Yeah. And then like play and then and then um but but of course like as a kid you desperately want to fit in, right? Like I felt very ostracized and alone. And so um and like my inherent, I, I kind of associated my inherent weirdness and creativity as being like bad and people yeah. were like socially rejecting me for it. And so that's how I became funny, right? I was just like, well, uh, I still want people to like me. And then mm. I realized like, oh, like, like people don't like, people don't like me when I'm like da da da, but when I'm funny and when I make jokes, people like, like me. And then, so I think, um, a lot of comedians actually like people who are yeah. naturally funny, like, like your comedy is like typically a trauma response because you like are trying to get people to like you and you're, and it kind of like doesn't even matter if they're laughing at you or with yeah. you because it's just attention, right? You just like, you just didn't get enough attention or, or enough love. So you're like, ah, da, 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 da. So then you become funny. And like, thankfully now I'm like funny as f Um, yeah. but, um, but I think a lot of comedians can relate to me in saying that like, you know, comedy, uh, uh like I think everybody, you know, is born and is traumatized and people cope with it in different ways and comedians coped with it in the, in the comedy way. And, um, yeah. I've heard a lot of theories on like, why do we even find things funny? Like, why do we laugh? And I know one of the theories is because you're saying something that's a little prohibited or something mm -hmm. a little traumatic, but you're saying, so you're cloaking it in a way where people feel like it's socially acceptable now. And that like weird tension and awkwardness is like, ha ha. And I wonder, you're saying, Hey, my life was so traumatic that I became funniest defense mechanism to say things that just toe that line of, ha ha ha, where's she coming from? But mm -hmm. like, I'm going to laugh now yeah, because, instead of getting mad at you. Well, yeah, because you don't want to just um, like, you know, humans don't like to feel pain and suffering, yeah. right? Like, 
And I was just like, well, I don't want to just like sit here and feel bad about it. Like I want to feel better about it. And like how I learned to feel better about bad things that were happening to me was to make a joke about it. Um, and then, and then as a result, you like turn to other comedy as a coping mechanism, right? Where you're like, oh, I feel bad, but like this person makes me laugh. So I'm going to like watch this. And it's just kind of like a circle jerk, right? Where it's like, I become funny and I watch funny things. And like, this is how I cope with feeling sad and, and self-hating inside. Yeah. Do you remember that first time, those first memories where you said something and people laughed? Yeah, actually, like I'm trying, like, um, I feel like it was maybe in like, yeah, it was maybe in like fourth or fifth grade. And, um, it's a really vague memory, but I just remember like we had like a, we had like a school like skit or something. And I was, and I think I was in like fifth grade. Um, and I was just like, um, improving during the skit. Like I was yeah. going like off the skit and people were laughing. So I like kept doing it. Um, and, um, and I remember like in, I don't know, it was in like fourth or fifth grade or whatever, like there was like, oh, you have to give a speech about something that like you believe in. Yeah. And then, so I was like, oh, I'm going to make a funny speech. And I think I made a speech about like how, oh, there's like Mother's Day and Father's Day, but what about like a kid's day? And then, so yeah. I made this like little speech about like, we need to have a kid's day. And I was like, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I remember people like laughing and I was like, oh, this feels really good. It's I want to like, keep oh, doing she's this. She's not the weird, quiet, special needs girl. Like, oh, she's funny. Exactly. Exactly. And then, so, um, so I kind of like developed being funny as like a way to get people to like me because ultimately I was like, you know, lonely and I hated myself and I wanted people yeah. to like me. And I was like, well, people like it when I'm funny. So I guess I'll just be funny. Um, and now that I'm like a fully formed adult who's like worked through a lot of shit in therapy, yeah. I now understand that, you know, I'm like inherently, you know, worthy of love just for being Absolutely. alive and all of that. And you don't need to be funny anymore. Yeah, exactly. It's just, um, I just am now. Yeah. So like, yay. Like <laughs> you're like default response. This is how early on, People gave me value and how I showed that I had it. And so exactly. now I'm just funny. Yeah, and um, yeah. but but I think it's like it's interesting when you say like, oh, why do we laugh at things, right? Because I think in general, um, I laugh at things when it's like, oh, this person is articulating like an unspoken truth mm. that uh, like I think what comedy is really good at is like you know there are all these things that we sort of feel abstractly, but people are uncomfortable talking about those things. Um, like, for example, like a lot of my comedy is like seen as wildly inappropriate because I joke about sex and drugs because mm -hmm. um, to a lot of people, those topics are really taboo, not to yeah. everybody, but to a lot of people, they are. Yeah. However, um, something like sex and drugs are things that people experience pretty regularly. And when you don't have a way to talk about them, it ends up being bad, right? Like there are all these studies where it's like, oh, like states that have the least sex education or the states where there's the where there are like yeah. oh, all these like unwanted pregnancies or, and like STDs because there's just a lack of education around it. You like seen in Japan, they have a culture that is not very open sexually. And then the gigantic number one source of like tentacle porn is also Japan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> comes exactly. Out somehow. No, 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 exactly. It's like when you, um, like I genuinely think that like people are always going to do what they yeah. want. Right. And then, so when you tell people like, no, you can't do this, obviously there's like a sense of rebellion. Like no one likes being told what to do. Like we're, sentient conscious human beings and we want to have freedom and like no one likes being told yeah. what to do and, and controlled and so when you have a culture and environment of that like people are gonna rebel and so how I kind of think about sex and drugs is like look like it doesn't matter if people are like you know anti-sex anti-drugs right yeah. like if you want to do it you're gonna find a way to do it so you might as well be educated and know how to do it safely right? Yeah. Like the whole, like, don't do drugs things is like, yeah, cool. But like people are going to do drugs, right? right? Like people are going to do drugs no matter what. And so, um, it's, I think it's just better to talk about it and be like, Hey, like, I can't tell you what to do with your life, but if you're going to do it, like, here's how to do it safely. Yeah. And, um, and I like talking about these taboo, these like taboo subjects because they're just, a part of our reality that are never going to go away. And if you don't talk about them, it like breeds terribleness, right? Like when you don't talk about something, but it's like happening, then it's just going to happen in a bad way. Right. Because no yeah. one's talking about it. I feel like your content, your comedy, there's a strong underlying narrative of mental health, self-awareness, self-empowerment. You're telling me like, yeah, I make a lot of content about sex and drugs. But deep down, it's also because this is like really taboo stuff that people should be talking about. Yeah. Like, and I think that like, 
um, what comedians or what the best comedians do very well is they take these like very uncomfortable and real subjects and they make them easy to talk about. Cause usually people are terrible at dealing with like emotional discomfort, physical discomfort, like, because yeah, no one likes to feel uncomfortable or bad. Like mm -hmm. it's very simple. Like good feelings are good and bad feelings are bad. And I think what great comedians do, or at least my favorite comedians, they are able to like take these really uncomfortable topics like, um, like death, for example, yeah. like death is an uncomfortable subject for everybody, but like, um, but like I hear, uh, so like Louis CK and like one of his, uh, recent, I can't remember if it was sorry or sincerely, but he mm -hmm. basically, um, he like, he always talks about death and it's like very, and you can feel the audience get really uncomfortable, but then he talks yeah. about it in a way that makes it comfortable. So he, he, in one of his recent, um, specials, he talked about how, um, while his mom was dying, he was like, you know, there with her, uh, as she was dying and he was like, oh my gosh, I'm like so sad. And his mom is like, don't be sad. Like we're going in order, you know, yeah. like we're going. And, and he was like, oh my God, don't say that. But then he was talking about how, what his mom said wow. to him was, was like, Hey, would you want me to live forever? And he goes, Oh God, no, like, I, no, that would be terrible. And, and, um, but then he starts talking about it and he goes, yeah. and, he, and it's like, Oh, people are so afraid of death, but like, think about the alternative. The alternative is living forever. And that would be way worse. Right? Like imagine if we, he, he's saying like, imagine if we still had people here from like the 1100s, right? Right. We can barely deal with people from the fifties. Like, um, and, um, and when you think about, and I, and I like that style of thinking, like thinking about the, like the alternative, right? So like, um, so one of my best friends, uh, she recently, you know, uh, she went on a date with this guy and, um, she thought that they really hit it off, but then he ended up like ghosting her. And then she was super upset about it. Um, and I was like, no, 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 you shouldn't be upset. That's like the best case scenario. And she was like, yeah. why? And I was like, well, think about the alternative, right? Like if he was going to ghost you, then he was probably going to do that anyway and the alternative is oh you go on 10 dates with this guy you see him for months and then he ghosts you like that would be way worse right and so yeah. um like no i like thinking about stuff in that way where people are like oh this situation is so bad i'm like no no no, but like there's a worse alternative right like yeah. i genuinely believe that like in the past everything had to happen the way that it had to happen right like we have like all these regrets of like oh if only i could go back knowing what i know now but like that that's impossible. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, um, like truly like time is like some weird bullshit social construct. Right. Like the only real thing is this, well, the only thing that feels real is like this present moment that we're having yes. now. Like right obviously now. the past exists, but like, but we did the best we could. It already happened. Yeah. And then at the, and at any given point in time, you are doing the best you can given like the knowledge and the resources yes. you have, you know, Pete, you're not waking up every day being like, what's like the worst possible thing I can do. Like yeah. you're just genuinely trying your best. And like we live in a fucked, like if you just pay a little bit of attention, you can see that like everything is deeply fucked up. Right. Yes. Like life is like deeply chaotic and, and up unfair, and, nasty, brutish. Or yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's the reality of life. And I think what comedians do, uh, and, and, and people cope with it in different ways. Like some people like to just not think about it at all and like escape it and, and try to live in some like weird fantasy in their heads where everything is okay. Um, but I think what great comedians do are, are like, no, no, no. Like, like I want to get into it. I want to get into reality yeah. and see that it's not, and it's not all it, cause it isn't all bad. Right. Like yeah. there, um, like there are a lot of things in life that are really beautiful and genuine and real. Like this conversation we're having yeah. now, like our friendship. And I, and I don't think life is about like feeling good all the time because if everything were good all the time, then it would be meaningless. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like, mm -hmm. um, I, like I always say, um, you know, people come to SoCal for like the weather and it's like pretty nice all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, but like something about it being the same all the time makes it so that it's actually less special. Like I've always said, like, uh, I used to live in Manhattan and when mm -hmm. I lived in Manhattan, um, like a really nice, like beautiful day in Manhattan feels a bajillion times better than like a nice day in LA because a nice day in LA, that's like the that's, norm. It's, it's the norm. And so like, it just, it's not special. Right. Like, I think there are things that, um, you know, people get so sad when beautiful things are temporary and I'm like, no, no, that's what makes it beautiful. Right. Mm. Like, uh, because if it were just there all the time, you would like, it would become normal and you would take it for granted. Right. Like everything 
like everything is inherently temporary, right? Like it's, it's, it's so cliche. The whole, like the only constant is change, but that's, it's, it's very true. And so like, I, um, like I, I've just learned to become like, you know, happy and feel like I'm living a rich and fulfilling life by like accepting like the full nature of reality. Like I I genuinely think that you can't, you can't just like pick and choose like the good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can either feel, or at least for me, like you can either feel everything or you can feel nothing. And I would much rather feel everything than nothing. Yeah, the ephemerality is exactly what makes something valuable and precious. That it's going to one day change and disappear is what makes you value it more that it's here now. Yeah, and, and like, and you can choose to be like, I'm so sad that it's temporary, or you can choose to be like, Wow, this is so great that this is happening, and I love that. When going back, you were that quiet special needs person in the corner just sitting and drawing if she could see you now and you had a conversation with her what do you think she'd feel like how that conversation would go oh she would be stoked like (laughs) i like uh in these last six months like i was doing a lot of healing inner child work right where essentially um like i don't know where i got the idea i think it was a mix of like i probably saw some like i think i saw some trend on tiktok where it's like if you're being mean to yourself, you're being mean to her. And it like goes to like a baby photo of yourself. And I was like, Oh wow, that's like very powerful. Um, and, um, yeah, no, like if the, like if the younger me, cause cause I just remember like as a child, I felt so, you know, like scared and lonely and, and, and helpless. And, um, and as a child, I had always dreamed of honestly, like being who I am now. And, um, I just think the younger me would be super, stoked and i think that's amazing and i think similar like earlier we were looking at your baby photos yeah. and like dude like young eric would be so stoked at like like the you now right like this like incredible like life that you've built you have this like amazing um like you have like all of this success and all of this greatness um but i think more importantly than that you have just a lot of people who genuinely love you and you have great and genuine relationships that are all a reflection of like how f- awesome of a person you are and i don't Thank think you, you give yourself enough credit for that i think and now i i feel like i feel like i want to ask yeah well i was just gonna say i think young eric it's funny because you say young eric will look at me and be like damn young eric actually also wanted to be creative and so when you spoke about you are creative that's the culmination of years having gone through very not creative job occupations and investment banking consulting and tech and so it really resonated with me when you were saying like you were younger you always like wanted to do this right yeah I mean, like, yeah. And then I, uh, and I was scared of being creative, which is why I like, you know, went to Berkeley and like worked for Google. Yeah. Um, Same. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, did not, did not enjoy that. It was just kind of what I thought that I had to do. Right. But like, even when I was like forcing myself through Berkeley and like forcing myself through Google, um, my creative tendencies were always there. Like I was still like, Mm. yeah. Cause I, and I was still expressing it in different ways. Right. Like I was always like, you know, consuming and making memes and like doing Mm -hmm. like funny little stuff, like just for my friend group. Like I was still always expressing my humor just in my social groups. Like it's gonna, it's gonna come out. And like, um, I don't know, Eric, like you are obviously very creative. Like you wouldn't have any of this that you have now if you weren't, if you weren't inherently creative. Right. Like I'm like, no, like you can't, like you can't just like make a successful business out of nothing. Right. right. Like, and, and like maybe, and like also think about your definition of creativity, right? Like this business that you've created, like, I don't think anyone else could have thought of that. Like I, de- like my brain doesn't work in that way. Like business, like I don't understand that stuff. Like anything that's like businessy, my brain doesn't work in that way. And it's like amazing that like, like, I think that's creative because Thank I you. like, I don't know. I couldn't think of that. I literally like, if you asked me to start a company right now, I would be convulsing on the floor, getting struck by lightning, trampled by horses. Cause I am like, oh, I'm helpless. I can't do that. So yeah, I think you should give yourself some more credit. You are very creative, Eric. First of all, thank you. And a lot of credit to my co-founder, Will, who some of you will be seeing will also be doing some podcast episodes too. Mm-hmm. Two, it reminds me, there's a poem by Langston Hughes, I want to say, where he says, what happens to a dream deferred, mm-hmm. right? Does it shrivel? Does it melt? Does it just explode? Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm listening to you. It was a dream deferred for so long. Yeah. And you were seeing these little outlets where it just couldn't quite be contained. Right. These memes, your friends. And then one day, 2020, COVID, it exploded. Yeah. (laughs) No, and because it was just bubbling up for so long. And then it was like, because um, because, like it was just a release, right? Because I had just been holding it in because I was 
you know, honestly, I was just traumatized at a young age to think that my inherent creativity was bad. And then, and I was also in an environment that was not um, celebratory. I don't know if that's a word. Um, but yeah, it shat on you for being creative. Exactly. It didn't right. Honor like you. I was only around, like, uh, like I remember, um, so at Berkeley, right. Like, yeah. um, I, I remember I was taking this MATLAB class for one of my, um, MATLAB is like a math programming language for like research, like in particular. And so I wrote this rap back in like 2012. I think I was a sophomore or a wow. freshman called teach me to debuggy. So it was like, teach me how to duggy, but teach me to debuggy. That's good. And I thought that was like super funny and awesome. It was a rap about MATLAB. And then I went and, um, I, got drunk and I performed it at like the Berkeley like computer science career yeah. fair. I literally like went to the career fair. I was like drunk. I was like 18 and I just was straight up was like, yeah, I'm about to perform this rap. Teach me to debuggy. And, um, and then I got like five internship offers like on the spot. Um, because they were like, wow, she's awesome. And, um, and, and I remember, and I remember being like, wow, that was awesome. And then I went and I told that story to just like a random, like, I don't know, just like some guy I knew yeah. who was like in a frat or, or, or whatever. And I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, like I just wrote this like funny rap and I performed it at the career fair. And like, I got like all these internship offers and everyone was like stoked about it. And literally what he said to me, he was just, he just put me down. He was just like, oh my God, like that's so embarrassing. Like, you don't think that's so embarrassing? Wow. Like, and, um, and yeah, that really hurt me. Right. And, but, but like that, but, and, and I obviously like, I remember it cause I'm talking about it now, like yeah, 12, like 10 I years, remember that too. 10 years later. Um, and, and, um, but like little things like that, like where I was just never in an environment where being creative and being myself was yeah. like, like, it was always like a bad thing. Right. Like I remember at Google, um, I like, I feel like, you know, people have to like present stuff in meetings. Right. And like slide decks are so boring and so yeah. like I would always try to make my presentations entertaining by putting like memes and stuff in them and I and my presentations were like actually good because people actually paid attention yeah. because they were actually funny and then I remember um so I had this presentation and then my um boss at the time she like had like a one-on-one -on -one with me and basically like reprimanded me for putting memes in the presentation because she was like hey like um it's cool that you put memes in the presentation but it's really uh, but like you know she basically told me that it was bad and that I shouldn't do it because wow. it was like taking away from the work that it was like too focused on being funny and taking away from the actual work. And I completely disagreed. I was like, no, 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 no. Like when people just regularly present, no one's paying attention yeah. and ingesting the information because it's boring. However, if you make something funny um, and make people actually feel something, they'll actually remember it. So we had like a disagreement, but like just like little things like that, where I was always just like, oh my God, like every time I'm creative, it backfires. And now, mm. and so then when I came into entertainment and I was like, just being myself and everyone's like, we love it. I was like, oh my God, really? Like, because I was just in an environment for so long where every time I was creative, I was just shat on. And so now it's like, now it's still crazy to me that I'm just like doing my most unhinged and it's like actually being received well and working. I mean, not received well all the time, but like in yeah, but general. People, people appreciate it. They're like, this is good. Yeah. And, um, and like, the last like couple years of um, transitioning from tech to entertainment has really just been a journey of like self love for me because I yeah. just because um I just hated myself for so long because like you know who I inherently am is like you know my creativity and personality yeah. out loud and I understand that like like I'm self aware right like I know that I have a very strong personality and that mm -hmm. um not a lot of people not everyone likes that like some people love it some people hate it and like that's okay. That's just how anything interesting works. Like I think anything interesting, at least that's interesting to me is inherently controversial. Like yeah. that's why it's interesting. It's interesting that because there's a POV. Yeah, exactly. It's like, Oh, it's like, I actually have an opinion. And when you have an opinion, like the stronger the opinion is like the more like people are going to like really agree or really disagree. Right. Yeah. And, um, and, and yeah, so these last couple of years has just been me like learning to love and accept myself through this journey of like becoming an entertainer and like for the first time, like putting for the, well, I mean, not for the first time I've been doing this for like no. two or three years now, but essentially like, but two or three years compared to like my entire life before that, it's still relatively new compared to like, I mean, I was in the like, uh, you know, Berkeley, that's like four years. Um, yeah, Google tech. Go Yahoo. Tech. I was in tech for like four years. Right. So that, you know, it's like eight years of that compared to like two to three years of this. Like yeah. I'm still, 
you know, unlearning a lot of the, um, self-hatred that I had when I was in that environment. And, um, but like overall, like just the more and more I put myself out there and just like continue to do what I believe in, the more I'm like learning to like love and accept myself. And so that's why I'm like, Eric, like if you want to be creative and you want to do a podcast, I 1 bajillion percent support that. Right. Because like your ideas are good. If your ideas weren't good, uh, like, I'm sorry. Like if your ideas were not good, you would have not gone to Harvard and like literally like, like if your ideas weren't good, you would not have been able to like get into Harvard as like an, where all the odds are against you, right? Like you're an Asian kid with like immigrant parents and there's like, you know, affirmative action and all that weird bullshit. Like you didn't have like the legacy money that all these like rich, like other people have. Right. So one, it's amazing that you got into Harvard. Um, and then, and like, you know, being a, you were a consultant at McKinsey, right? Yeah. That's like literally the hardest job to get in business, right? Like I remember I, I was at Berkeley and you know, everyone who was a business major at Berkeley was like super insecure because they didn't go to like Wharton or something. And I just remember like everyone being like, oh my God, like McKinsey, BCG, Bain, these are like the top mm-hmm. tier. And like, you know, McKinsey is obviously ranked number one and to become, and like, you have to be literally so smart and creative to, that's like literally the hardest job to get in business. And then you transitioned into to Instagram, which is like literally one of the hardest companies to get in. Cause like, you know, in tech, like it's like you have the fang, right. But, but really it's Google and Facebook. Let's be real. Like mm. really it's Google and Facebook, right? Because, you know, um, Amazon and Apple and Netflix aren't notoriously great to work at because they don't have all, like, you know, like people like really revere like Google and Facebook slash mm-hmm. like Instagram meta because of like, Oh my God, all the perks, all the benefits. And it's like literally so f-ing hard to get a job at one of those companies. Right. And like, inst- like not even like, you know, Instagram, like Instagram is so everyone wants to work at Instagram. Mm-hmm. And like the fact that you were able to get like the hardest job to get in business and then the hardest job to get in tech. And all you also went to Harvard and then you, and then you quit and created this like incredibly successful company. Like, like you, you are a f-ing, like f-ing rock star, right? Like, like you, like your ideas are good. Like if like you wouldn't have any of this that you have now, if your ideas weren't inherently good, like even this, like, this is amazing. Like playing, we're not really straight. Like, this is such a, like, this is such a great idea. I, I remember seeing your first podcast episode and I was like, this is so genuine and authentic. Um, and, and there's a market for this, right? Because you don't see people, you know, like, like us who like, you know, yeah. we went to like a good college and had a good job come out and be like, that sucked. And I hated myself. Right. Yeah. Like, um, so I think what you're doing is like really unique and important. And, um, I support you and remember you, that Melissa. anybody who hates on you is actually a fan because they're jealous and you, and like when you get a hate comment, you won, you mm-hmm. won because you put yourself out there and you got their attention. You got them to engage because the alternative is no, like, like it's way better to like post something and get like a lot of hate comments yeah. than to post something and no one engages with it because the reason you're getting hate is because what you're saying is actually interesting and mm. it actually makes people think right it's like oh you got a reaction out of them you yeah. actually made them think you took up space in their mind and now they're taking time out of their day to like like you you're yeah. you you're they're prioritizing you like haters are fans I love haters that are fans framing. and i think one i deeply appreciate that and all of us should be as lucky to have a friend like melissa I'm a pretty good friend. In her life, I mean, like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty dope. Pretty amazing. Yeah, and yeah. also hot as fuck. Exactly. All also the very and, hot. And she's funny too. I don't and know if funny. you heard. Yeah. She's like pretty cool. You should check out her Instagram. She's got like a few followers. Kind yeah, of. Yeah, I'm just deal. starting. NBD. Mm-hmm. And the second thing I want to say is, yeah, I think you really, I feel very understood and seen. Every. That's because I understand and yeah. see you. That's why you feel that way. Because I understand <laughs> and see you. That yeah, makes a lot of sense. Even in college, I got into all these different roles. Even in high school, I got into Harvard because I was finding little corporately Asian parent acceptable ways to channel my creativity. Right. Like I got into college because I did a lot of speech and debate. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to be an actor, to write, to do things that are fun to watch and to entertain others. And Similarly, you, I always felt like, no, like that's a waste of time. I don't get to focus on this. I need to get into school. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the way to channel it was like through speech and debate. Mm. And I remember when I was in high school, I went to Boys State, which is 
all these students in the state gather together and run a mock government. And they, it's like Lord of the Flies. It's a group mm-hmm. of like over 1,200 young high school men. And they're all competing at the top positions and they're voting in each other. And I actually won because yeah of course you did thank you i of figured course, out yeah that doesn't surprise me at all yeah of course you did which like me like super nerdy awkward like asian kid because i figured out oh if i just give really funny campaign speeches mm-hmm. that's actually gonna work yeah and so i find these like socially i don't know why acceptable. because you're creative and you're good at being creative thank you. like that's why it worked and that was it just Reminding me when you're talking about like you're at Google and you're giving these presentations, right? Or you're talking about like, teach me how to do bus seat. That was my version, right? It's mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm like running for things and I'm speaking and I'm pitching, but I'm doing so in funny ways. Even as a consultant, even as a product manager, so much of those jobs is actually around storytelling and building real connections with people. Yeah. And the part I was always the best at was like, hey, there's a saying, right? If you want people to build a boat, don't teach them how to build a boat. Inspire them to chase after the sea. Right. And I'd be like, oh, I know how to do that. I know how to get people excited. I wasn't as good at the other parts of being a product manager consultant, but that initial part, because I was like, oh, it's get to talk, get to make jokes, get to share my POV with other people. And oh so, yeah, no, yeah, I mean, like, I, like, I mean, so much of like my success is like, well, like I think people just don't realize how important, yeah. you know, social skills are because like, because life is inherently social, right? Like no yeah. one, like everything is like a network of people all doing stuff like so much talking to each other. Yeah. Like, and like so much of my success now is quite literally just built on the fact that I'm good in person. Like when people meet me in person, they like me and therefore they like want to work with me. Like, you know, we met in person (laughs) and we like instantly clicked and now we're like both working together and being successful together. For Kynix, the first time I ever met Melissa, I had a FaceTime with her and after 10 minutes, she's like, I'm going to go watch a bunch of turtle races down in Venice. Do you want to join me? Yeah, no, because we FaceTimed and I was like, (laughs) oh, this guy's awesome. My friends are visiting from out of town. Come "Come on down, watch the turtles. Yeah, let's go watch turtle racing. Did we go bowling afterwards? we went bowling after that. And they were playing your song, The Bowling Alley. Yeah, literally. And that was just fun. It was so fun. It was just so funny because, um, you know, my friends were in town and we yeah. facetimed and immediately when we facetimed i was like oh this guy's awesome Thank like you. this guy is I awesome i want to introduce him to my core friend group now <laughs> um yeah and then no way same day three hours from now are you gonna be there and i was like yeah i'm so down yeah and i was just like okay eric you're coming to this thing like i basically was like okay you're my you're my friend now um and then i was like cool come to this turtle race and we were like okay the turtle race is kind of mid but we're all just hanging out together yeah. it's fine um then we went to the bowling alley and then the dj who was djing the bowling alley like recognized me and like played my songs and i was like this is so funny yeah, it was pretty amazing. Okay, let's do another question. Yeah, I want to like level two. Level this two. This time you ask. We didn't I ask. You did. The first this one? was me. This was. Oh, you're right. This time I asked yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You, ask, you ask, ask me. You. But then and then I have to like answer it about you, right? Yeah, exactly. What title would you give this chapter in your life? Oh, okay, so it's so it's about me again. Okay. Yeah. Um. Cringe and unhinged. Um, that is, that is good. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Like I always say, I'm like, yeah, cringe and unhinged. Um, to be honest, I am kind of living my dreams right now. I'm doing very well. Like I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm living my dream because my dream is just to be able to do whatever I want, whenever I want and to be myself and to be appreciated for being yourself instead of slapped down. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, I, have no complaints honestly like i'm I love that yeah i'm i'm living my dreams and like i um know that i deserve all the success i have now because i worked very hard for it yeah. like i had um you know i didn't um i didn't have like a very you know supportive upbringing uh and so um yeah and so like you know quite literally when i was 18 I kind of just, you know, left my family and hometown and was just like, okay, bye. I'm not fucking with this ever again. And then, um, you know, like became, you know, worked really hard at Berkeley and became financially independent through like tech and then, you know, quit and did all this stuff that I'm doing now. And, um, and like, oh my God, shout out to like my amazing team at UTA and the three arts. They literally changed my life. Yeah. Uh, because and it was awesome because I just started putting myself out there on TikTok in the pandemic. And five months later, um, you know, UT and Theorites were like, hey, you're awesome. And we want to support you. And I was like, wow, really? That's amazing. And and, um, and like ever since then, 
I don't know. I've just been, I've just been living my dreams yeah, and like cringe and unhinged, cringe, cringe and unhinged. Yeah, that's. Oh, well, but like I want to do one where it's like I we get yeah. to talk about you. You, you ask me, ask me okay. level two. Okay, okay, because I want to do it because I'm like let's talk about you, Eric. Of course. What question are you trying to answer most in your life right now? I love it's like the price is right, and you're just like yeah. What like, que Eric? Hello, what question are you trying see? to answer most in your life right now? That's a tough one. I think over the past few years, what I said earlier. I've been finding increasingly more natural ways for me to express my creativity, mm -hmm. right? From, oh, I'm a consultant to, oh, I'm a product manager to, oh, like now I'm a founder and I got to work with creators. Mm -hmm. And this, even being to build a friendship with you and being in conversation with you today, I'm like, wow, I'm so happy I get to do this. Like I actually get to talk and express my perspective and people might listen and watch. It's like, actually an insanely people wild are listening and watching that it's not my yeah. they are like that's such a bizarre concept like oh like maybe what i say people might actually like and i think i mean i even started taking acting classes these past couple of that's weeks amazing just Fuck yes. just for fun Hell i was yeah. like i want to do something on the side and i've actually really enjoyed it and you know yeah. what's so funny part acting of me, is so fun part of me feels ashamed for taking the classes right because part of me is like Oh, but this isn't like productive. Like it is productive. It's the it's the bad voice in my head. It's like this is gonna help you be a better CEO. And then other part of me is like, well, if it helps me be more me, how can that not be a good thing? And so I think the question I'm trying to answer now is how to continue balancing what is good for me and my development with being a really good co-CEO along with my partner Will and growing carrot, right? Because the two very much go together. But it's not completely perfect. E.g., now Carrot, we're at a size where most of my time is actually learning to manage, manage people, manage managers, manage managers who manage other people and so on. Yeah, you're doing a lot. That's crazy. And yeah. I would never be able to do that. It's like a whole nother level. And I'm excited to learn it. And I want to do a really good job. You're and already doing a good job. Thank you. It's really new to me. And I'm like... Okay. That's good. New is good. Right. I'm like, well, I'm learning to express the creative side of myself, but then there's this whole other set of responsibilities that I haven't thought about. And how do I prioritize between the two? Like, how do I balance? Like, do I become the type of CEO who's always going to be more focused on like the relationships or am I also going to have to also learn to continue get better at managing? Right. And I think it's that balance between Eric and Carrot. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest question I'm trying to figure out right now. Mm -hmm. um, and may, I think you're not giving yourself enough credit because you're like, you're, you're using language like, oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to da, 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 da. Yeah. But like you already are, right? Like you're already good at it. And like, yes. I think that the, you are your own worst enemy. Like I, I think that you should trust your judgment because trusting your judgment is what got you here, right? Thank you. Like, your decisions and your opinions and your ideas are good. That's why you have all of the success. And like, and I don't, and I would hate to, for, to see you suffer yeah. unnecessarily. Right. Like, um, and, and it's interesting. You're saying, you're saying you're trying to balance those two things. I mean, I think you can just do both. Yeah. That's like, what I'm trying. Like, like for example, like, um, so I moved to LA from Manhattan and mm. like, I, I really miss living in New York, but I also want to live in LA for the career opportunities and stuff. And then, so people kept asking me like, Oh, like, are you going to move back to New York? Like, how are you going to choose between LA and New York? And I was like, why do I have to choose? I'm just going to get a second place and have both. Like at the end of the next mm, year, so you're by coastal. You're going to be, I'm going to be by coastal. Uh, Cause I think like by the end of next year or like maybe in two years, that's sort of my plan. I kind of can't wow. like ma manage like getting a second place right now, but wow. I know that, um, like, 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 it's interesting, right? Like why limit yourself? Like why be like, Oh, I have to choose between this and this. And I'm like, I think you can have both. Right. Like, right. like for example, um, when, even when it comes to something simple, like ordering at a restaurant or like ordering delivery, yeah. people will be like, um, like we're pretty financially sure. comfortable. Right. Like, so ordering like, so like if we go to, um, if we go to a restaurant and, like there are two entrees that I really want. I just, just get both. I just get both mm -hmm. um, because people are like, oh, should you do that one or that one? Oh, well, it's going to cost more and I'm not going to finish it. So who yeah. cares? I want both and I can afford both. Like, yeah. like, I um, like, I don't think you should, you know, limit yourself. Like, yeah, you can, 
you know, be a great carrot CEO. I mean, mm-hmm. you already are. And also be a great actor, right? Like you see all these people um, who are like, oh my God, like Donald Glover is an amazing example, yeah. right? Like he's just good at everything, right? And like, I'm sure people were like, oh, like, how are you going to choose between da, 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 da? And he was just like, I'm just going to be good at everything. And um, like, yeah, I just, uh, I, I don't think you need to tell yourself these like self-limiting beliefs of like, oh, how am I going to balance, you know, da, 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 da. like you're already, you're already good at all that stuff, right? And like, no, and, and like, just by you being yourself and trusting your judgment, like you're, you're, you're already doing it. You know, like, it's so interesting to hear you say like, oh, I'm trying, I'm trying. And I'm like, you're not trying. You are doing it. Right. I appreciate that. And I actually remember I had a conversation with one of my employees where he was just like, usually when I have a one-on-one, I always ask him, how are you? And he asked me, okay, I'm fine. But how are you, Eric? Yeah. And I cried a bit because I was thinking of, hey, I want to do content because I think it'll help Carrot. I also want to do content because I really want to do it. And I was like, oh. And ultimately, it's fun. It is fun. I it really makes you enjoy feel good. it. I like it. And yeah. I felt so much shame around the concept of like, oh, God, like my personal Instagram following, which I kept private for a very long time, might grow because of work I'm doing for Carrot. Because there was such an internalized voice in me that was like, no, you don't get to do that. Like, that's you being a bad CEO. If your personal Instagram following is benefiting because of work you're doing for Carrot as content, wow, that's like really misaligned incentives and not morally right. And I was talking with my team member, and he was just like, what are you talking about? That's literally an insane crazy thought yeah (laughs) like that's literally that's crazy yeah it's just like no i like internally knew it was like off but he was just like what are you talking about like yeah no you just said that to me and i'm like what you just said is crazy (laughs) yeah he was like if it helps carrot and it helps you helping your following grow also helps carrot like it all builds on Uh, each other i think we're so used to there being something wrong or there's like a problem with it right like we're so we're not used to things just being like good a hundred percent right it's like oh there must be something like you know because inherently like we're you know problem seekers and problem solvers like that's what makes us good at stuff um but yeah like uh but i'm gonna lead you through it so like you've been wrong before right oh 100 percent. i'm wrong a lot yeah so you could also be wrong about that thing you just said right like just because just because you have thoughts in your mind and sentences in your mind doesn't make them true right? right like um you know, our brains, like we just have a bunch of sentences running in our minds all the time. And like, they're, that's literally all we're, they we're are. not always just our feelings. Yeah. They're just, they're just thoughts. It doesn't like, yeah. just because you believe something and you feel something doesn't make it true. Right. Like, yeah. like think about flat earthers, right? Like they're yeah. all these people who are like, they really believe that the earth is flat and like, that's okay. I mean, it you doesn't change it. the fact that the earth isn't flat. Like you can for sure believe that, but them believing that doesn't make it true. Right. Like, um, you know, you know, back when, um, people thought that the sun revolved around the earth, yeah. like just because a bunch of people believed it didn't make it true. Like, you know, there's, there's a difference between what people believe and what's like actually true. And so, um, yeah, I think like I, I said this to you before, but like, you know, so many people who are hyper successful are afraid to let go of their self-hatred because they have this false narrative in their head that their self-hatred is what made them successful. It's like, oh, I hate myself and that's what motivates me to become better. And so if I let go of my self-hatred, I won't be successful anymore. And I think that's totally yeah. bullshit because I learned to stop hating myself six months ago and I'm actually more successful now because I'm not wasting my time being weighed down by negative self-talk. Yeah. Like, like letting go of my self-hatred has actually made me more successful. And I was so afraid to let go of it. But like, you know, it's like what I said before, where, you know, you think that you're successful because of your self-hatred, but what if you're successful in spite of it? I love that. Yeah. I feel like a lot what you talk about, have you ever done cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I feel like so much of that, it's the reframing. The stories we tell ourselves in our head aren't necessarily true. Yeah, and but the <laughs> thing is, what you tell yourself in your head becomes true, right? Yes. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So like, you know, um, I, you know, I used to really struggle with like my body image, right? I was yeah. always just like, oh, like, uh, like I'm ugly. I don't look good. I'm ugly. I don't look good. And, and so um, 
like that's just how I felt, even though it wasn't true. And then so when things would challenge that belief, I would just like make up some weird excuse, right? So when people who's a, who, who like I found attractive would like tell me that they thought I was like good looking attractive. I would just be like, Oh no, like they're just lying because they want to da, 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 da. I would just make up something that, because it didn't align with my self. You, I would never like let myself like believe that that's how they actually felt. And yeah. then, but as a result, I was telling myself that. And then, so I just kind of kept like validating that through thing where, where I would just interpret things as being like, Oh, it's cause I'm ugly. It's cause da, 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 da. they felt bad for me, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. And then, um, and then like recently coming into entertainment, like I was so shocked, uh, that like all of these, like, you know, hot celebrity uh -huh. entertainment people were like, Oh, you're attractive. And I was like, what? That's crazy. That and you're, you're like, saying? maybe I should actually start believing it myself. Yeah. And I was like, that's crazy. And then once yeah. I started telling myself in my head that like, I was good looking and attractive. I just like, I don't know. I was just like, Oh, like, like my whole life changed. Right. Like more people started being like, yeah. And I was like, Oh my God, like this entire yeah. time, it was just like my fucking energy. Right. It was just my, it was just my energy and my own negative self-talk bringing me down and like making me like feel ugly and act ugly. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, like the stories you tell yourself in your head, like that's what, that's what comes true. I think your example where people were literally telling you you looked attractive and your mind found other ways to interpret it to support your own internal narrative. Yeah. It speaks to the strength of the habits we form in our mind to protect ourselves. Like right. You had this story about yourself because at one point it served you well. It protected you. Yeah. It protected me from rejection. Yeah. Because right? you're like, oh, I'm ugly. So and, yeah, and of I'm course like, oh, I was rejected. Yeah, I don't yeah, need course. to go out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so um, like... Yeah, I was just trying to, I was like, oh, well, it's just probably because I'm, I'm ugly. Yep, that, that makes sense. And it protected you, but eventually it wasn't. And yet your mind was still so hard at work to continue this narrative that literally have people being like, Melissa, you look great. Yeah. And your mind's like, nope, I'm ugly. You feel bad for me. There's no way this is true. Yeah. And then, and ultimately then I had to like, you know, learn like, because everyone always, it, obviously beauty is subjective, but then to actually believe that takes a lot of work. Yeah. Um, and honestly being on TikTok the last couple of years helped me a lot with my body image because, you know, um, you know, we, you grow up in an environment where like, you know, we're millennials. So we didn't, w the internet sort of like grew with us. Right. It right? wasn't already there. Right. Um, and so, uh, being on TikTok like exposed me to all these different types of beauty that like, you know, like how I, the environment that I grew up in was like, oh, like, this is what's beautiful. This yeah. is like the objective standard. I definitely standard. didn't look like that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and, then, and, then, and I was like, okay, like, you know, I was socialized to believe that, like, there's this, like, one way to, like, look good, and I didn't look like that, so I was like, I guess yeah. I look bad. And then, you know, getting on TikTok and seeing all of these people, you know, go viral for who like, you know, didn't fit that mold of what I was taught was beautiful. But then like all these people on TikTok who like, you know, were like unconventionally, or I mean, yeah. you know what I mean, right? Like, uh, there's just such a diversity of people who clearly other people think are attractive. Yeah. And, and then, I, like, and then I was like, Oh, like that, mu then, then if that person is perceived as attractive, then it's totally possible that people can like perceive yeah. me that way. Right. And so, um, uh, yeah, it is just kind of like exposing yourself to different stimuli to help you adopt a better worldview, right? Because ultimately, like, it's so hard to know the truth about yeah. things because reality is so like weird and fucked up and, and subjective. Anchored to what and, people have in their what people have in their heads and what they talk about with each other. Yeah, exactly. And then your brain is like all these chemicals and all these neurons firing in directions, and yeah. it's just so hard to know like what's actually true. And then there's also the question as to whether there is such an, there is such a thing as like objective reality. Yeah. Um, and so given that, given how hard it is to know what's actually real, why not choose to believe what's helpful? Like if you can't know what's real anyway, why not just choose to if believe what's helpful? If everything is just a set of arbitrary stories, why not pick the ones that you like? Yeah, exactly. Like what, like why, to, like, you know, cause at the end of the day, like, well, let's take, let's take something like beauty, yeah. right? Like, um, like there is no, if given that there is no like objective, like what's beautiful, why don't I just choose to believe that I am like, that's yeah. like way better than choosing to believe that I'm not. Especially when you have a lot of people who are literally telling you this. Yeah, exactly. It's like, Oh no. And like, it's like, cool. Like 
let me actually take people's opinions at face yeah. value. Right. Because like when I give a compliment, I genuinely mean it. Like I, yeah. you know, my whole, like I don't say anything like, my whole brand and anyone who's familiar with me and my content knows that I just say whatever's on my Super mind. I am very straightforward. I don't really think before I speak. I just say literally whatever's on my mind, like instantly, like I don't overthink anything. I just am like, these are my thoughts right now. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Um, and doing that has, you know, given me all of this awesome stuff in life. Like I'm living my dreams and I have yeah. really amazing friends and a network of people I love who love me and it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and so, and, and that just came from uh, being honest and being myself. And so, and, and it's very liberating. It's just, yeah. it's so liberating to just be myself and, and people still love me. Like, yay, that's great. That's kind of that's what everyone huge. wants, right? Like, that's great. Yeah. I love that. All right, I'm going to ask you a level three. Okay. I think we're ready. Let's do it. Level three. Both players share something you're most grateful for in this current moment. I mean, I feel like I'm going to give the easy answer, but what I'm most grateful for in this current moment yeah. is our friendship. Getting to do this with you. Yeah, I was thinking the exact because, same um, thing. Well, well, because it's like, you know, obviously we both have a lot of friends, but I think that um, we connect on a really deep and hyper specific level, yeah. uh, because, you know, ultimately I think humans just want to feel Connected. understood yeah, and, um, and I feel really understood and seen by you because we so. both have this like kind of similar background of like, okay, we both like, you know, we're Asian American. We have like the kind of, uh, traumatizing like uh trying to do creative things and being told like no slapped down by everyone going through the corporate life and just gradually building up oh i can't do this anymore until one day yeah i mean we have like yeah. such um like hyper specific yet similar yeah. life experiences right like oh we were both you know we're both around the same age we i both, also like, went to a ton of different schools as a kid as well yeah exactly yeah, right that, and like, like oh, that was me yeah and, and um and it's like yeah like i went to berkeley you went to harvard yeah. i worked at google you worked at mckinsey and instagram now and we're now, both here in la and now we're both doing <laughs> and then we both were like fuck that let's just do yeah. our own thing and on top of that we're still like you know kind empathetic human beings yeah. despite all of our trauma you know we kind of went through a lot of similar things and sort of arrived at the same place and so um i feel very understood by and connected yeah, to you totally. and uh because you know like even though i have a lot of friends like they don't necessarily under like you know different friends understand like different, different parts, parts of different you things. yeah and there's this really strong underlying narrative both of us fall into that to your point there's so many people in this world and so many things going on i always appreciate it as a miracle that Hey, I got to know you and you got to know me. Yeah. We found each other. Yeah. yeah. We found each other and we're doing this now. And, uh, I'm very excited. I think we have our whole lives ahead of us and we're just going to yeah. keep becoming like happier and more successful. And I think it's going to be great. I love that. All right. Level three for you. Okay. Level three. Let's go. <laughs> oh gosh, this is a good one. <laughs> what do you most admire about me? This is like such a like circle jerk question. Like, yeah, like tell me what's good about me, Eric. <laughs> what do you most admire about me? The self awareness more than anything. Mm -hmm. Many things, but number one, the self awareness. I feel like you're aware of who you were, who you're becoming, where you're at right now, and what you like about yourself and the things you're continuing to try and get better. I love and appreciate you're very open about, hey, six months ago, I still hated myself and these were the narratives that I was going through. And now six months later, here are the things that I'm learning to appreciate about myself because it inspires me. Mm -hmm. As someone who identifies with a lot of what you've been through, to hear you go through it and trying to become healthier and better makes me feel like I can too. Yeah, because you can. Yeah. Like, and, and like, that's why I, you know... Do it like, cause like it, we, we really aren't strangers. Like we're not really strangers. It's like, like ultimately like, you know, yeah. everybody in the world is afraid and crazy. Yes. Like literally like every single human being in this world is scared and crazy and no. And like, and if anyone denies that you're wrong, <laughs> like you're just, yeah. you're, you're wrong. Masking like, it. Yeah. Like if you think you're not scared and crazy, then you're yeah. crazy and scared like you just like, don't want to say it you just like yeah. either you are lying to yourself or you're not aware of it and 
both of those things are just a reflection of what I just said. That's, that's scary and crazy. Right. Like, yeah. um, and I just think that when you're more like when you're honest, it enables other people to be honest because like no one gets fulfillment out of just like living a superficial life of like, everything's okay. And I'm hot, you know, like you only get like, like the good stuff is hard. Like that's yeah. kind of, obviously we have worked really hard our whole lives and we understand that what's worth it is difficult, right? Yeah. Like, um, if something's easy to achieve, it's not meaningful. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of whatever, right? Like it's so interesting when people, um, so obviously dating is like a soft, is like a sore spot for like pretty much everybody in the of world. Course. Um, and people, I think it's interesting when people like complain about how hard it is to like date and be yeah. intimate. And I'm, but like what I'm thinking is like, well, no shit. Like it should be hard. Yeah, you're finding a life partner. Yeah. Like it's like, no, like, because like, obviously it should be hard because if it weren't hard, it'd be meaningless. Like if it were, if it were just easy to like connect with people and fall in love easily, then it wouldn't be awesome and, and meaningful. Like same with like, you know, any sort of career success, right? Yeah. Like, like, you know, we're, smart intellectual beings. And so we want to be intellectually challenged. Like if I can do something and it's like really easy, then it becomes boring. And then yeah. I don't, I don't care. Right. Like, you know, at this point, like I've made so many videos and like, I, I kind of know like what'll, you know, quote unquote go Ooh, viral, wow, yeah. but like, that's not interesting for me. Right. It's like, okay. Like I've already done this a million yeah. times. And so now I'm like working on different projects that are intellectually stimulated. You know, I like, I don't post for other people. I post for myself. It's yeah. like, no, no, no. I, um, I know a lot of creators have different way. Like some creators, like they, they have like a posting schedule or whatever. Like I'm so anti like businessing my yeah. like, cause it constrains the creativity. You finally come to appreciate and value and use. Yeah. And it also takes the fun out of it. Yeah. Right. Like the entire point of me quitting Google to do something I love is to like actually have fun and enjoy it. Yeah. And by like, making it businessy, like I'm going to put out five videos a day and like, it's like, it sucks out all the joy from it and completely defeats. It. Like if I'm going to do that, then I might as well still be working at fucking Google. Right. right. So like, I like, like I have no like schedule in both in my life and in posting. I just literally post like whatever I want, whenever I want. And I consider something a success, not by the numbers, but if I like just am happy and proud of it. Right. Because like in the past, like, uh, when I was first creating content, like there were times where, you know, I would make something that I knew would go viral, but that I wasn't like really proud of. Yeah. Uh, and like, even though it did well numbers wise, it didn't, it made, it actually made me feel bad inside. Yeah. Cause I was like, Oh, like this is accessible. That's not really me. That's not really, uh, you know, like, yeah. um, versus when I do something that I'm like, Oh, this is something I'm like really proud of. And like, I'm just, I know it's good and I'm happy with it and I'm and it, and it's fine if it flops or whatever, because like, yeah. I know it's good. Um, and I had fun making it. So it was successful. I love that. Let's do one more. Yes. Level let's do three. One more. This time it's you. Okay. <laughs> Why do you think we met? <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. This is like making me think. When you are who you actually are, you'll quickly filter out the people who just aren't going to vibe with you and you're quickly going to find the people who do. And I think both you and I have reached a stage in our lives where we're kind of just like, yeah, like this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like it, you're probably just going to self-select yourself out of being friends. Yeah, exactly. And so I actually love that from the very first combo we ever had, you were so unapologetically you. Yeah. You were like, hey, we're not going to text. Jump on a FaceTime. Let's talk. Hey, Eric, like, here I am. Like, here's my friend. Here's what we're up to. Yeah, like, I just went through this whole journey. And it, in turn, really helped me be myself more, too. Because that's something I'm learning to do more and more. So then we were just, like, both real with each other. And we're like... Yeah, let's like hang. Yeah, let's cut like cut the bullshit. Let's exactly. just be real because yeah. because here's because I just think like the truth is gonna come out eventually. Yeah. Right. And so you can either be honest now or you can be fake and the truth will come out eventually yes. and it'll be weird and bad and then you will have wasted all that time. Like like so for example, like um when I first like 
like meet someone that I'm going to go on a date with, I don't wear like any makeup. Um, because I, cause like, I'm like, no, no, no. Like you're going to see my real face eventually. Like, I don't like when I like, I'm going to go on a date or something. I literally just show, I, I don't wear like any makeup. I just yeah. show up with like my bare face because I want you to like me for my bare face. Mm. I don't want you to like my face. Cause it's like all dolled up or whatever. It's like, because like, look, if we're going to be intimate, you're going to see me without makeup eventually. And I want you yeah. to like me for that. I don't want you to like me for this. Right. Like, I and like, like that. and that's why I'm just real with people because like, I don't want, I don't want people to like me because I am like a micro celebrity or whatever. Like, I don't want people to like me for like my success yeah. or, or, or like, because they feel like they can get something out of me. Like, yeah. I'm just like, I always just try to show up as like my raw unfiltered self. Um, I don't like, for example, people are always like, Oh, I, I hate having to be on versus off. And I'm like, I don't have an on or off. You're I just, just am. You. And like, and so like I, whenever I have a thing, I just show up. However yeah. I am like, 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 I'm just like, if I'm hungover, I'm showing up and I'm just going to be hungover. If I'm yeah. tired and grumpy, I'm going to show up and I'm going to be tired and grumpy because if you don't like me for me, then you don't like me. Right. Like, like it's like, that's, and, and ultimately like, I want to have real relationships and real connections. And like, there's no, like, it's to me, it's just a waste of time to like put on a face and be, I don't know, just, just someone you're not. And like, yeah. I know that like, I, like I know deep down inside that like, I'm like an empathetic and loving and caring yeah. individual. And like, if you can't see that when I'm hungover or whatever, then you're never going to see that. Okay. Right. Like, I don't feel like I need to prove myself to people. Like, I think that if you just are who you are, like you'll like the right people will come. Like I have you in my life. I'm yeah. very grateful for our Same. friendship. And, um, and that came from us just being like, yep, we're ourselves. Yeah, no, cause exactly. Cause like, that's why I don't, I don't like to like do the formal text thing. I'm just sort of like, no, no, no. Like we need to just talk yeah. in person. Like, cause, yeah. cause like we're going to talk in person eventually. Right. And I find out fast and now. Yeah. Uh, let's just, let's just get into it now. Right. If we fuck with each other, we fuck with each other. I really think that ties to what I said earlier. Your superpower is being self-aware and just being you so much that it encourages me to just be me around you. Like, I feel like I can, I think earlier today I was like, yeah, I'm just like super tired. I went through this stuff yesterday. Yeah, no, me too. And I'm yeah. just like, yeah, I'm, I'm super tired too. And both of us are just like, that's chill. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, like, it's fine because nice. like I value you for you and Same. like what I want for you is for you to be yourself. I think the point you said earlier Hey, you don't want people to value you for all your success. You want them to value you for you and acknowledge that all the success you've seen is because you are you. Those outward sized metrics are imperfect measures and captures of just you being awesome. Yeah, exactly. And so focus on what really matters. Yeah, and like and like same for you as yeah. well, right? Like I like I I will always say like I will die on this hill that like any successful person is successful because of who they are. Like they're not yeah. like, like they're not valuable because of their success. Their success is a byproduct of who they are inherently. Okay. And you know, like you being you, like, like you didn't, no ordinary lame person could like get into Harvard and then work for McKinsey and Facebook and build this amazing company and have all, you know what I mean? Like, like you're fucking awesome and people love you and support you. And, um, and if you weren't like a super likable person who people like people like you, right? Like people love you and like want to work with you. Right. Like, uh, like as soon as we started talking, I was like, yeah, this guy's awesome. Uh -huh. I trust him. Thank um, you. which is why I like, you know, being like, I know you and I know that you're like smart and you have good intentions. So that's why I like trust you with all my finances. Yeah. Like, I'm just sort of like, yep. I like, and I trust this guy the, with all my the finances. Same way. I trust you to always give feedback because we might not always do things perfectly because I take that responsibility. Very and you know, seriously. I'm always going to be honest. Yes. Yeah. Same page. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks so much for coming. Yeah, of course. I love you. I yes. I love you. Mm. I would literally do anything for you. I, I know we're going to be friends for life and it's just going to be awesome. And one day when I'm like really rich and really famous, we'll just be partying on my yacht and I can't being, like, and being like, remember when we went to Harvard and